Hello, my name is John Gillard. I'm a professor of statistics and data science at Cardiff University and one of the editorial board for Real World Data Science. And I'm really chuffed to be having a chat today with Penny Holborn from the Data Science Campus at Office for National Statistics. Hello, Penny. Hi there, John. Would you just like to kick us off by explaining what you do at the Data Science Campus at the Office for National Statistics? And maybe could you just say a couple of sentences what the Data Science Campus at the ONS uh, is all about? Yeah, sure, no problem. So the Data Science Campus was set up, you know, in terms of a bit of a sort of call from government around ensuring that we are making the best use of data that is available for sort of making decisions to improve public goods. So we're all aware that data these days is all around us, you know, and there's a wealth of information. So we need to ensure as government, you know, we're, we're at the sort of latest advances of technology to be be able to sort of really make the most of this data that's available to draw insights from that data to to make decisions that affect people's lives so the data science campus is all about us using you know that data bringing sources of information together and using the latest tools and techniques to exploit that data to really make sort of actionable insights um yeah to sort of help society. So I myself um, lead the social and international data science squad. So that's kind of got two arms to it. So the social squad is kind of um, one that looks at social uh, data science and sort of projects and programs that sort of, you know, focus around that sector. So things around communities, housing, um, education, you know, everything in that sort of sector. So access to services, population, um, a whole host of different kind of um, um, sort of demographics. And then our international data science team is a little bit different in that the remit there is around, you know, supporting and building data science capability internationally. So the data science campus has this remit about being at the forefront of data science. And so having a responsibility to, to build data science skills. So in our international team, we're actually funded and a specific funding to focus on certain countries, um, mainly across sort of, you know, um, sort of um, different regions, like things like Ghana, Namibia, um, Rwanda, in terms of helping support them build their data science capability, whether that be through us actually going in, training, mentoring and supporting and imparting our knowledge, or through sort of um, us supporting data science projects to help enable them to make better use of their data. Well, well, it sounds like you've got quite a coverage there from <laughs> actual data science projects where you're trying to use the latest and greatest data science tools out there to solve real pressing problems in society. But also then you're doing this uh, almost outreach type of program where you're trying to share the benefits of your work to other uh, international uh, countries uh, as well. So, um, Reflecting on, you know, the the more uh, that your your social part of of work, then um, how how do projects come about then? So uh, a project bubbles up from the surface, and then how do you identify the latest and greatest data science to throw at a particular project that bubbles up? Yeah, so projects can come from a variety of different places. They can come from within the ONS, because obviously, you know, at the ONS, we are responsible for producing official statistics for here in the UK. So, for instance, um, you know, we have a whole department within the ONS um, looking at health and producing sort of health-based statistics. So, for instance, a certain team within sort of the ONS associated in a specific sort of health area, um, whether it be, say, adult social care, for instance, will come to us for a need um, in terms of needing our data scientists and our skills to help support them with the project to be able to sort of, you know, produce this official output, you know, that you see often on the news, you know, or in different sort of media outlets. So we can get those internal based requests to support the ONS, but also government departments will come to us. So if I think still within that health se uh, sector, for instance, the Department for Health and Social Care here in 
in the UK responsible for, you know, um, managing our sort of um, health based work can also come to us and say, look, we're looking at doing, you know, X, Y and Z. We would really like your input on this or support or we've seen you've done work in other areas utilising the skills. Can you sort of come on board and help us? And then our, our part of that would be, you know, to bring our data science skills to help support in terms of that side, you know. And a lot of the work in that space at the moment you mentioned there around the tools and techniques is about sort of finding new ways to use data. And um, at the moment, we're doing a lot of work in terms of trying to use new sources of information and data that exist sort of um, out there and which are accessible to sort of start to see, can we simulate, um, you know, reliable results and responses similar to what have been produced through a census, but now through just generally publicly available administrative data that exists um, with the idea that, you know, that's much more reliable, real-time, up-to-date information of what people actually do, rather than relying on a census, they say, you know, that takes place, as we know, every 10 years, you know, that's a mammoth undertaking, you know, very costly, and again, relies on people completing that survey and the responses they give. But, you know, these days now, there's data that exists out there that actually can tell us a lot more around what people actually do, um, as opposed to what maybe people would report in a survey and in a response and John as you know you know when people when we carry out surveys we're only ever able to take a portion of the population and we do an awful lot of work in trying to make sure that is representative of, of people you know and the real demographics and we've got all those intricacies and biases considered but again you know nothing's as valuable as actual real data you know with a complete picture of what we've got so yeah, absolutely. And I think that's getting future gazing as well, making advantage of all the data that's now available in the world and, and trying to use that to get rich real time data, as you said, as opposed to, to waiting every 10 years or so for a census to come around. And I assume as well that a census is hugely expensive as well. So there, there might be some financial benefits in looking at other data sources. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, I remember it wasn't too long ago that I had somebody knocking my door um, looking for a neighbour, you know, who'd moved house because they were still trying to, you know, source a completion on a census. You know, the amount of work that goes into this, even from that ground level of people on the ground trying to, you know, encourage people to complete these censuses, the work that goes into designing that census, the analysis, the tools, the production, you know, it's a constant sort of, you know, even though it's a 10 year cycle, it doesn't, it doesn't stop does it in terms of um mm -hmm. the the work that goes into that and again as, as you know there you know we have now a wealth of information you know out there readily available but i guess the challenges that come with that john is about trying to now look at linking these data sources and data sets mm -hmm. together you know for instance we're all aware say you know the department for work and pensions captures information around you know people's work and that sort of side of things hmrc you know responsible for looking at taxing and all of that if we were able to you know help those organizations data better communicate with each other we'd have a much better picture around sort of you know somebody's working relationship i know i saw a, a really nice presentation recently for the the big data challenge um, that happens across governments every every year around sort of that data linkage and looking for you know matching data and uh, sort of um, discrepancies we all know um we we hear these adverts all the time around filling out self-assessments and how how challenging and timely that is you know if that process could be automated through linking up sources of information that already exist you know it would um again help um both improve efficiencies time money you know and a whole host of other things as well absolutely so go going back to your your team then the, the makeup of your team uh do they tend to have degrees? Do they tend to be computer scientists, mathematicians? Are they PhD trained? Are they uh, apprentices? What, what, what's the makeup of your of your team? So I would say actually quite varied in some ways. You know, data science is very much seen as a, an interdisciplinary area in that, mm. you know, we bring together people from a variety of different backgrounds. So, you know, traditionally the ONS, you know, still, you know, has a, a large number of sort of statisticians and mathematicians, you know, in terms of being able to work in those methodology based areas, etc. But again, data science very much is looking for that analytical understanding. You know, there is 
is still that statistical underpinning um, of the work we do. But then, you know, what sits on top of that is the ability to be able to utilise, you know, computing skills to manage and manipulate that data and actually start to, you know, move away, you know, in some respects to some of those classical statistical techniques to some of the latest sort of methods and models that, are, that exist. So there's always that kind of underpinning of statistical, you know, knowledge and foundations to be able to understand, you know, um, what these models are actually doing and, you know, how to evaluate them. But again, those the, it's those technology skills that are growing more and more. So we have people, you know, from, from areas like psychology that study a lot of statistics, mm. but we also have people from things like physics that work with a lot of data and, you know, engineering. We have economists that kind of have that sort of different level thinking that help us understand those sort of policy decisions. So one thing maybe I should make more of a point is, is that the work we do at the data science campus and the actions that we or the insight we gain from that is around informing on policies, you know, across government and for government in terms of, you know, um, is this working? Is it not? What's the best next step or what should we look to do to improve, you know, X, Y and Z? So, um very much yeah. in, in that sort of space. So we have, yeah, a variety of different skills. But again, most have sort of come through that academic system, you know, through a course or a route where they've, you know, had to learn some programming or use some data or carried out some statistics and have sort of identified a passion and a love for exploring information and asking questions of data. And realistically, that and that's that's the skill that is hard to teach is just that sort of, you know, what asking asking why and asking what and asking looking behind the scenes um yeah mm -hmm. um in terms of that and what about so you, you mentioned you know you can have economists psychologists mathematicians mm -hmm. computer scientists um do these projects are these projects team efforts do you have lots of people trying to to work together then to you know as you say a, a government department almost challenges the data science campus with this problem so then is it a team effort are then set to run on this this project? Yeah. Agreed. And that, that can come at, at many different levels. So, you know, even on a very sort of individual based project, we will often sort of work collaboratively, collaboratively, sorry, in terms of things like peer coding and reviewing and sort of, you know, um, bouncing ideas off people. But, you know, for some of these bigger scale projects, they're very much sort of, you know, uh, a larger team effort. So even within campus, we work across squads. So I mentioned some work we've been doing looking at um, trying to really produce some local level estimates of population using more administrative data um, rather than census data at the moment. Now we're working with our mobility squad within campus that does a lot of work in the geospatial sort of area and they have some um, access to mobile phone data and they have a lot of skills and knowledge within that domain. So we will draw on them and the knowledge of their data and the skills they have to come on, on sort of board for part of that project to help inform a different stages and again you know it's about bringing in the right people at the right time you know using our colleagues across the ONS as well you know with their business domain understanding of the data and how it's collected you know and so it's very much a, a collaborative effort so okay and how do you then keep uh, abreast of all the latest and greatest technologies and data science you know almost continuing professional development how, how do you make sure that you're still using the the hot and latest uh, stuff yeah, you know, obviously that's an ever ongoing challenge, isn't it? Data science is ever evolving and ever changing. So we are always learning, you know. Um, I think we'd be naive to think that that everyone sort of knows everything. So again, that encouragement, as you say, in that professional development, you know, many people engage within sort of more academic based courses and qualifications. We have access to those, um, but also just generally sort of, you know, getting out there and not looking just across the civil service, but also looking why um across what's happening sort of latest um areas you know the the campus works with places like different academic bodies you know the Turin institute a whole host of different things to ensure that it's bringing in knowledge um to to help us keep up to date and i guess one of the biggest areas in that that's emerging right now is is you know ai and where that fits mm. you know in terms of what we do and how we evolve the data science campus to sort of you know um look to to utilize you know the latest tools within sort of artificial intelligence to help inform what we do as well and um, I'd say probably one of the the most kind of um, 
you know, talked about areas at the moment is all around sort of, you know, the the outputs of chat GPT and how mm. we as a, how we can sort of learn from that and start to understand where that's useful across government, I guess. So um, yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask about as well. So you you did a bit of future gazing as to how uh, you can use alternative data sources to inform a census type exercise uh, in the future, and of course the the the, the challenge and opportunity that uh, AI is going to present all work domains. I think sooner or later is is going to be a fascinating watch. So has has there been discussions at the ONS then about the challenges, threats, the the chances that such things are, are going to give you? Yeah, of course. We've even started some sort of, you know, initial sort of scoping and projects, even internally at ONS. You know, we've built a little bit of a, the, the team in the campus have, have built a, a sort of like a chatbot style tool. Um, so that's chat that kind of uh, looks to reproduce some of that technology internally. And actually, it's for our own sort of internal search features on our web pages. I, I don't know if you've used the ONS website, but sometimes you can look for something. And there's so much information in there. You know, mm. it, it's quite hard to sort of navigate. So we've been starting to understand understand how do those sort of technologies fit within a government department and with the types of data we have. I think there's one thing to think about um, when we're, you know, the type of information we have. A lot of our information is sensitive. You know, it's it has to go through a whole host of different sort of procedures. And so getting access to that data, you know, and using you know, external platforms and tools with that data is is definitely some conversations uh, and some work to be done around that. You know, the security element is obviously paramount um, as part of that. But I think one thing that, again, is evolving, you know, that maybe comes out a little bit from that, but um, has more to it is around the ethics of using data. You know, mm -hmm. we hear around some, uh, you know, people's concerns around AI and, you know, what it, what it can do and what it knows about you and what it can generate. And so, again, we we need to think with all of our projects within the data science campus, you know, in terms of, you know, the ethical considerations of using personal information of people, you know, to make mm -hmm. decisions and inform policy. The ethics of that plays a, a very important part as well. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, a few closing questions then. So uh, suppose you were an aspiring data scientist uh, and have decided that, yes, the Office for National Statistics is the place uh, that they want to be. Could you give any career hints or tips for someone out there that wants to work for the data science campus in, in the future? Yeah, no problem at all. Well, I think in terms of that data science campus, if you're keen to kind of develop and grow with, into a data science based role, you know, as I mentioned, there's two sort of core technical elements in that. It's that mathematical and uh, analytical underpinning, you know, and mm -hmm. then those developments of those programming skills um, in terms of being able to, to utilise some of the latest tools and technologies. But apart from that, I would say um, we have such a thing called the Data Science Competency Framework that exists across the civil service that outlines a number of competencies that we recognise, you know, um, the data scientists need to work within this domain, you know, and obviously they have those technical elements like sort of applied maths programming and builds and things like data engineering but actually they're made up of a lot more of that things like innovation and we've mm. touched on sort of new ways around thinking about data thinking about processes evolving things they're things like business impact so again data scientists don't just you know look at just building a model to solve a problem it's about working with organizations with people with stakeholders you need to understand the business problem you need to be able to translate that you need to be able to make and inform on sort of outputs and communications around that so there's a lot more i touched on capability building you know mentor and support others so there's a whole host of skills that go into being a data scientist there's a whole toolkit of um uh of things you know in managing projects project management skills but i mm. would say um you know if you come from a statistical background you know and you have those statistical skills you know look to 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 look at some of the latest open source tools like things like r and python for using those skills in a new domain and again um this whole host of sort of open source materials and uh, courses and learning that you can just get started in terms of showing you um how you can apply those skills you know within a data science setting Absolutely. Well, lovely. Thank you, Penny, so much for your time and giving us so many fascinating insights into life at the data, uh, data science campus. We, I think we could have continued for ages. I mean, we didn't really touch upon, you know, you mentioned some of the work that you did with other countries as well. And maybe we can save that for a, another day. But another thank day. you so much, Penny. No problem at all. Thank you, John. All the best.